So the last thing, make sure you guys replace your cabin air filters. The model number for 2020 F-150 is CV12150. CV12150. <laughs> I do thank Rough Country for sponsoring this video. Rough Country did send me fender flares. Guys, if you really want good quality fender flares and you have a Ford F-150. All right, so quick story. I wanted to get the Ford Lightning, but the wife said, no, I completely understand where she's coming from. It's a sort of a new truck still. We got it in 2021. It's 2022 right now. It's almost two years old. I'm like, if I'm gonna keep this truck, I'm gonna upgrade it. So I done a ton of research, compared prices to a lot of parts and a lot of different designs. And I eventually found the pieces I wanted to get one by one. It just wasn't a quick search. I spent weeks doing this. Eventually came to the conclusion of finding these parts and these rough country sf ones is perfect they're very easy to install and just so you guys know some customization is actually needed for some of these parts to get it fitting the way that you want so let's go over the pieces that i installed on the truck and let's see how well this was and i once again thank you rough country for sponsoring this video and i seriously suggest you guys go to roughcountry.com and get these sf1 fender flares let's go over this footage and just get to it Completely wanted to upgrade the headlights. The, it was time for the Raptor style look when it comes to the projector lights around the uh, rim of the headlight. And it looks fantastic, you guys. Very easy install, plug and play, and that's pretty much it. All right, this grill I got from madhornets.com. Now, the original grill that I bought, I got off of eBay. I thought it was like the uh, fantastic grill at the time, but I wanted something a little bit more unique. And I found this grill, and it was at madhornets.com. Everything's going to be in the description below, you guys, just to let you know. Nothing is on. Now they're on.
When it comes to this bumper, as you can see, it did not sit right. I did not like the way it was. It was wobbly at the ends. I did not like that at all. And so there was a nice gap in between the actual body of the car and the, the bumper. So I tweaked it a little bit. What I did is I added two spacers to it and that actually fixed the problem. Because you know, if you put two spacers in between something, it's forced to go like that. And if you have an extension that goes around, that's naturally gonna go up with it. So that's what I did. And that actually completely solved the problem. Sometimes you guys you gotta think outside of the box to get the job done with the stuff you already have. If you guys follow the channel, that's exactly what I do. Sometimes I gotta MacGyver some stuff. So unfortunately, when it comes to the rack, I did not film that because uh, it was raining outside. It was drizzling all day on and off, and I did not want the camera to get wet. It's an expensive camera. I don't feel like wrapping plastic around this. I just didn't film it. But here is the end result of that. And I, in my opinion, it looks fantastic. It does. It's a different. It's, uh, it's a little awkward, but that's what I want. I see regular racks all the time on the road, and they're boring. There's, like They all look the same. I wanted something different, and that's exactly what I got. I also did a lot of research on lights. I wanted a specific look. I did not want the traditional big, rounded light look. That's, you know, it looks cool, it looks awesome, but I wanted something different. I wanted a, a, a smaller, clean look that actually provides a lot more light. And these lights are so bright, it lights up the entire area. I wired them properly, I got everything lined up underneath the truck that goes in front of the bed, and then that goes into the rack. Wiring these correctly is very important, you guys, because these have to withstand the weather, including snow. There's nothing right there. All right, let's see how wide this is. 20, 20.3 millimeters. Be careful when you do that. Gotta vacuum that up. 
man, I, I do feel bad about that scratch, but it's okay. Good, you guys. See, see the lights are off. Now, they're on. Perfect. I got a 2.5 leveling kit. So when it comes to uh, taking out the struts and suspension off of the off your vehicle, have a little help. That this is the part to where you need an extra set of hands and someone to you know keep an eye in case if something happens. You could do it by yourself. You are able to, but you want a friend to do that. It actually was very easy to take the struts off, to take everything off in the wheel well. It was not hard. It's just a mental thing of you being scared if you're gonna do it right or wrong. The wiggle probably maybe 18. 18. It should be right there. All right, so these are the four pieces of the fender flares. Two front, left and right, two back, left and right. Of course, you got the trim and instructions. And of course, you got the hardware right there. Guys, I watched videos on this. This is super easy to do. It's very easy to do. Just like uh, the other stuff, you need to do a little customizing because like the, the holes, the, the pre-drilled holes aren't gonna match every single make and model for the F-150. Just use a Dremel tool and you line up the hole with the, where the hole you think where the hole would be and you have a little bit of play with the original OEM uh, screw. It has a nice washer on it too to cover up uh, the little extra space of the hole in case you made the hole a little too wide. But you just take your time with it. You just puncture uh, with the Dremel tool or rotary tool. You just puncture a little hole where you, uh, if you after you line it up, then you're good to go. Just uh, secure it, and the uh, fender flares are on like they should be. These fender flares look amazing. Now, when it comes to the front little two inches hanging off to the side of the bumper, I personally love that look. What I could do is lower the bumper a little bit and extend the two, the two other pieces along the side of the bumper out so it's flush, but I actually like the way that this looks and I can see at a certain angle, it looks really good. I wanted spacers, so the first set of spacers I got was 1.5. They worked out perfectly. I love the way that they looked. But then, uh, but then Rough Country sent me these fender flares because suddenly the 1.5 spacers with these fender flares didn't match up. So it, the fender flares extended beyond the tire. So, so I needed to expand my spacer. So I did go to roughcountry.com. I, I bought these myself, $89 for a pair. Remember that, but these are much higher quality products and I actually feel safer with these, with these specific spacers from Rough Country those two inch spaces are perfect for my goal. When it comes to tightening up these wheel spacers, make sure you do them to your the specs of your vehicle. the interior I threw in a second row of the weather tech I got tired of the carpet just sitting there just collecting dust you know I, I kept it up I've been vacuum all the time but now I really don't have to worry about that as much so now the weather tech for the second row is there and if you guys take a look at these seat covers I got these uh, 
custom interior sent me these seat covers they are phenomenal i've been using them for the past while and i am so glad that i have them for winter i really am i thank you custom interior for sending me those and the last thing i wanted to talk about which i didn't even think about this until the last minute is mirrors i did not want to wire the light that is on the mirror that is right here I actually see that on the road and I said to myself, I am not going to have that light shining like that because it looks, in my opinion, that looks weird. Now the light does act like a turn signal and so that's what I actually uh, only wanted to do. So the original OEM wiring is actually capable of that. Then you just got to cap off the exposed wire just so that they don't erode it throughout, this, throughout its lifetime and they'll, they'll be fresh to go if you do decide that you want that on there. But I personally do not want that on there. I have enough operating lights on the truck. I think I'm good with those lights being on. So you guys, you do not need to take off your door panel to take this out. Like that, done. It's, it's the guys, this stuff's easy. You guys need to tinker with stuff. It's easy to do. Just to show you guys what it looks like. Empty. And don't always rely on Ooga Dugas, you guys. See, that's better. And without connecting any of the additional wires do have turn signal but otherwise are really for this light and for a puddle light right here which I never cared for lights right there and I don't really care for this one I don't really care if that work I'm, I, I could always wire it later to the mirror so you could adjust the mirrors as you need to and I will say this is a big difference in view right here that's not powered you got to manually do that but what a difference I want this I want the turn signal light only to work on the side mirror just like that it's back on done it's good as a trick signal but the power works I'm the defroster I'm gonna see if that actually works when I turn the defroster on in case if you need additional towing, and I do tow stuff, I, these mirrors are gonna come extremely handy this winter and summer. And also you gotta use the right tools for the right job, you guys. Do a little bit of research, have a little fun with it, think outside of the box, and you guys can do this as well. So if you guys wanna update your Ford F-150 or truck or Jeep, go to roughcountry.com and check out what they got. They actually have a lot of stuff. I was actually impressed. I'm glad that I found those two inch wheel spacers on their website. When it comes to the importance of wheel spacers, I wanted something that was better quality than the 1.5s that I got. And I'm glad that I got those rough country ones. In all honesty, when it comes to all these upgrades, I've been driving it, I've been driving the truck for a little bit with all of them on, and I really don't see a performance difference. I did see that I have like a 0.6 miles per gallon. Uh, I'm not gonna worry, I'm not gonna lie guys, I'm not worried about 0.6 miles. I'm not, who cares? So if I missed anything, I'm sorry, uh, but the truck upgrade is worth it, you guys. I hope you guys get motivated to do the work yourselves because it is so much cheaper if you do. It is seriously very cost effective if you learn to do this yourself. Tinker around, have a little fun, and you learn something. So that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you found this video helpful and entertaining. Please like this video. Please hit the bell button to be notified of future videos, and please subscribe to the channel. This is Dave Nicholas. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you guys next time.